Hey there, Honor uh, Western Civ. Uh, I'd like to welcome you into my home for the first flip lesson of the year. And today we're going to be talking kind of about where, just why we call Western Civ, Western Civ. Why, what is the difference between Eastern and Western? Where is that line? Where did it start? That whole rundown. So kind of to give you the basic premise of why we're starting so early than earlier than everybody else and then also just to kind of talk about where we're starting where we're going all right now first of all the west all right what is it what does it mean how, how like why 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 do we do that so what do we mean when we speak of the west what we mean when we speak of the west in culturally in terms is number one a free and participatory government all right idea about the west uh that is transcended time is the idea that your government is free. You have the right to vote. You have a right to participate in that government. Now, were there periods of time where this wasn't true? Of course there were, but eventually it's all come back to that. Also, religious toleration is another big part. We have multiple, multiple religions that exist within most Western cultures. The last idea is that they're capitalists, all right? So now this is the current day West. This is the West that exists today, kind of where it's gone. Now, in capitalism, of course, if you don't know, you need to go look it up. But capitalism is the idea that businesses are owned by individuals and that they are used to make a profit and that they're used to gain like finances and money. Um, so geographically speaking, the West is a tradition that began around the Mediterranean Sea, spent centuries as a European developing idea, and then it spread across the world. So, for example, the Parthenon that you see on this presentation is a Greek historical object. That right there is a part of the West, okay? Now, if that would have been a spire from a Persian city, that would be a considered a part of the East. So, now, the West. The idea of the West is kind of controversial. A lot of historians don't like to believe in it because of the presence of slavery and freedom, which also is a part of the social class system. Uh, women, historically, in the West have had fewer rights than men, and also in the West there has been the idea of wealth and poverty. Groups of people who have immense means versus the ones who have nothing. So this is some people say the West can't always be great. You're just like the East with the rest of us, but we culturally know that that's just simply not true. Now, don't write this, but the definitions also bring a paradox. The idea that like how it interferes with itself and how some countries have become a Western civilization, even though they didn't used to be. Uh, first of all, for example, Western civilization began in what's present day Iraq. And then today, Japan, which is considered a Far East country geographically, is Western in their practices because they're capitalist and they are much more, they actually vary, their economic system is based almost completely off the United States. So are they Western now? Are they still Eastern? Are they a hybrid? We just don't know. The reason why I'm telling you this is because you've got to understand that this isn't a pure cookie cutter, that, like you're, you're too old for that now. History isn't cookie cutter anymore. It's all open for interpretation, okay? So, now, also during the Cold War, Turkey was Western, while Libya, far to the west of Turkey, was considered Eastern. So, it's just one of those things you gotta understand. Through time, some countries and cultures go in and out, things like that. But the West is much more of an idea. It's the idea of, geographically speaking, the Greeks were considered the first Westerners because we didn't know much about the rest of the map. You know, that's where it all started. But then also, too, look at the Greeks and their differences between the great Persian Empire, right? Persia felt that um, they had a, not capitalistic excite, but they were communal. Everyone worked towards a similar goal. And then also, on the flip side, the Greeks were much more fin for yourself. They had slaves. They had uh, people who ran businesses. Money. Money is a huge uh, like idea of the West. So, anyway, moving on. The word itself of civilization comes from a Latin root, civ, all right? Now, you can't see it under my face, unfortunately, and I don't feel like moving it because, as you know, I sweated, like, ridiculously today, and I don't feel like even this, even this at this point is really tough. So, the Latin root for civ uh, is, like, excuse me, civ is used in many Latin words such as civ, civis, which is a citizen, and then civitas, which is a city. The cities appear crucial to our sense of a civilization. Now, when we say city, can that also lump in towns, villages, all that stuff? Yeah, of course it can. It's just a large group of people consolidated into one spot. 
So concentration also, if you want to say it like that. Cities emerged as a result of what is called the Neolithic Revolution. Now, this occurred about 9,000 to 10,000 years ago in Mesopotamia and Egypt. Now, Neolithic, hold on, right? This isn't on here right now, but I need you to write this down. Now, Paleolithic people, P-A-L-E-O-L-I-T-H-I-C people, they were nomadic, excuse me, um, 10,000 BC, around that time period, they were still nomads. They were roaming the planet, finding food, chasing after vital resources, okay? Now, Neolithic people, as we know, started staying in one spot, creating civilizations, cities, towns, cultural ideas, all those things. So, the Neolithic Revolution, though, occurred, that dramatic shift, the Paleolithic to Neolithic shift, is believed to have occurred around 9,000, 10,000 years ago in Mesopotamia and Egypt. This revolution was the development of farming, the domestication of animals, and the creation of surpluses. Now, don't ask me why I made surplus possessive. My grammar's not the best in the, on the planet, but a surplus is an excess of material used for survival. So farmers after the Neolithic Revolution were actually growing enough product to sustain them throughout the year, not just for the growing season. So that's a really important part. Now, extracting food from arid regions surrounding rivers uh, demanded a really, really big sense of social cooperation. So a civilization, a key component of a civilization is also the idea that we're working together towards a goal of not dying, all right? So no matter if you're west or east, civilizations work towards the idea of cooperation. This led to labor specialization, such as artisans, blacksmiths. An artisan is just a skilled craftsman. An artisan could be a blacksmith or a carpenter, or a farrier, a tanner, which is a person who makes leather. All right, so this led to social stratification and an organized government. So the idea of economies led into government, and then oddly enough, religion really kicked off after that because what came first the chicken or the egg it's kind of like what came first government or religion did religion influence government does it make us better people etc 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 so in turn complex religions are going to result from old ideas of religion exemplified when early people started to bury their dead so paleolithic people when they started burying their dead we knew that they believed in some type of religion because if they're burying their dead that means that they don't want what to happen to the body Exactly. They don't want the body to be desecrated. They want they, That means you believe in the idea of a soul, a spirit, something that is going to exist on past just this normal realm of understanding. So, civilizations arose about 5,000 years ago, okay? Now I'm talking about a civilization. So the Neolithic Revolution happened 10,000 years ago. 5,000 years ago, we started living in civilizations, like groups, and having that social cooperation of trying to stay together and stay alive. Now don't write this next part, but that seems like a long time like that seems like a long time but keep in mind that the earth is four billion years old and that homo sapiens sapiens are around forty thousand years old so the kind of humans that we are today have only been using five thousand years of its potential okay now their ancestors home the ancestors of homo sapiens sapiens which are neanderthals pro magnums uh what else? The original Homo sapiens, uh, Australopithecus, those guys are 100,000 years old. Humans in general can be traced to Africa. That is where all humans are believed to have originated, to about a million years ago. A million years we've been around and we still aren't doing something. So this course, though, again, don't write this. This course is mostly about our story, man's story from early civilizations to the gifts that they are endowed upon as us as they shaped us every day. For example, you're writing right now on a piece of paper the idea of paper is originated from papyrus, which was an Egyptian invention of taking reeds and smashing them together to create sheets of paper. Also, Egyptians invented the first types of inkwell pens. And then also, Egyptians' ladies invented eye makeup. It's called coal, K-O-H-L, taking coal dust, mixing it together with a viscous substance, and so you could actually dress your eyes up with it. So there's like a ton of these things. Same thing, the, the, the beware of dog. I have a beware of dog sign in my house right now because he's a ferocious beast. Rufio! Come. Rufio. Come here. Come on, bud. Rufio, come. He doesn't, oh, hey, here he comes. Come here. Come here. Good boy. 
So as you can see, I have a beware of dog sign in my house because of this ferocious monster. Now, the funny thing about it is, is beware of dog signs originated from the Romans because their homes open to the street and in the floor of the entrance to their homes would be a mosaic tile picture of a dog and it would say Canis Carnaeum and it mean literally, meant literally beware of the dog. So it's, these are things that you use all the time that people don't give enough credit to. Now, the history teachers just haven't really felt that it was important to tell you, which is terrible. Now the first humans are, are we're not even going to talk about the first humans, actually. Scratch that. Now, hominids are man in general. Now, hominids are going to spread all over the world through migration and settlement. Now, that leads to a lot of people understanding the idea of, like, why was it so easy for the Europeans to take over the Native Americans? Well, it was easy for them because the Native Americans had only been organized for, like, you know, a couple thousand years, whereas the Europeans had been organized for almost 5,000 years up to that point. So... The development over time, because people migrated across the Bering Strait from Asia into the U.S., and they weren't—they didn't have enough time to develop the way that these over-industrialized countries did. So now, don't write this, but this is just how long the list of people have been around, like Australopithecus, Homo erectus, Homo sapiens, Neanderthals, Homo sapiens sapiens. We've been taking a long time getting to this point. Now, the emergence of civilizations has six characteristics okay so there are six characteristics of a civilization the characteristics of a civilization are a concentration of people living in large groups a distinct religious structure so that means gods priests an entire hierarchical order political and military structures which is a bureaucracy an army having the ability to not only take care of your citizens but also wage war um, social classes are a characteristic of uh, excuse me a, of a civilization also record keeping, writing, being able to, literally we are a civilization to this day simply because we write down occurrences. Y'all are all historians all the time when you get catch on to Twitter or Instagram or anything like that. And then also the last characteristic of a civilization is artistic and intellectual activity. So this is where our journey starts though. We're going to start here in the Fertile Crescent between the Tigris and the Euphrates rivers. We're going to discuss uh, Sumeria and Mesopotamia and kind of how they set the foundation. Now, they're an Eastern civilization, but they're going to set up Western Civ. So we're going to talk about them. We'll start with them tomorrow. I hope you all have a fantastic evening. Uh, like I said, this one's a little bit longer, but it's because I wanted you to see my dog. So all y'all have a great evening. Ray, I'm going to be looking for your notes tomorrow. I'll see y'all then.